Hello and welcome. I am the Audio Man. And for the past two weeks, I've been reviewing the Fine Audio F501 tower speakers. They've recently won an award from What Hi Fi Sound and Vision magazine 2018 to 19, and I can say they do sound really great. In this review, I'm going to give my conclusions on the speakers, how I feel about them, really. I think that's important. The unique selling points, the specifications and the first impressions build, fit and finish. So let's get to it. When I first got these out of the box, as I was pulling them out, I thought that's unusual. And there was this curve at the front and back of the speakers. It's just a little thing, but I think it's a nice design, sets them out as a little bit different. Also, the packaging. The bottom of these speakers was surrounded in polystyrene, which was all broken up. And for speakers of this price, size and weight, I think that's a bit unacceptable. It's not a deal breaker, but I thought it should be mentioned. So let's just examine these speakers briefly. They are the black oak finish, as you can see, and that is a real wood veneer. So nothing cheap here. And looking at them from the front, you can see that they have an aluminium chassis surrounding each speaker. If I can get in a bit closer, I don't know if you can see that. They have hex bolts all the way around. And that aluminium finish as well is brushed, which I think is a really nice finish. The tweeter is mounted in the centre of the mid-bass speaker. And below the mid-bass speaker is the bass driver. Both six-inch drivers and really nice you know, when I was picking them up, they felt like they were made well. There's no problems with the veneer flaking or not being put on properly or any issues at all with the quality that I can find. So looking at them, you'll notice that they have these plinths down the bottom and they are for mounting spikes into, which do come with the speakers. And when I was reviewing these, I did notice a difference when I had the spikes in. It did tighten up the base considerably. Also, if you look at the bottom of the speaker, you'll notice all of these ridges around the bottom. I'll just get a torch and see if I can sort that out. Yes. So, around the bottom here, see all of these points down the bottom? That allows the air to come out from the base port, which is down firing and going into a curved cone, which allows the air and sound to distribute evenly throughout the room and also allows these speakers to be positioned, not be too fussy about where they're positioned. The other good thing about these speakers is the where the spikes are mounted you can adjust the height from the top. So all of that fiddly time consuming uh, fuss that you go through of trying to get them level, if you've got that top adjustment there, which you have on these, it really does save a lot of time. So around the back, you have binding posts and these are really good high quality binding posts for the high frequency and low frequency of course they can be bi-wired or bi-amped and that's really something i would expect of speakers of this price to be that sort of quality so what are the unique selling points no let's go let's first go through the specs actually these are 90 decibels, so they're very efficient. You don't need to put a lot of wattage into these to get a lot of sound out. And that's a really big plus with these. I like efficient speakers. I've had speakers or I have speakers already that are not very efficient. And it does mean you need to turn your amplifier up quite a lot. But these don't suffer with that. 90 decibels is very efficient. These have a power rating of 75 watts RMS, so that's a very conservative figure. 
and I can attest with my 100 watt uh, amplifier by Arcam A32 that these can take a lot of wattage and they don't they don't worry at all no matter how hard you test them push them and test them they have a frequency response of 36 hertz to 34 kilohertz and that's plus or minus six decibels so that's a really good reading there and a good flat response throughout that range they're 98 centimeters tall by 20 by 32 deep they're two and a half way design and they have a titanium tweeter and they weigh 18.9 kilograms each so what are the unique selling points on these they have a something called a isoflare isoflare design which means basically the tweeter is mounted in the center of the speaker but what is different about these speakers if you I don't know if you know about Kef's version of these, the UniQ. These tweeters are mounted very deep within that woofer and that gives it more of a horn-like design. In effect, all of these little grooves that are around here enable the tweeter's energy to couple with the air effectively and that allows the tweeter to be very efficient and very loud compared to what energy, what amount of electrical energy is being put into it. Also, these have a two six inch drivers and they are made from um, a proprietary paper mix of different papers in order to get the mix correct for the desired frequency response. So that's something that Fine Audio deals with in order to get the, the mix correct. So it's not just paper, it's also, you know, it's, a, it's a, a special kind of paper and all different types of fibers which are used to get that right. The bass track system, which allows the air from the base, lower bass driver to move down and out through a firing port and down onto a curved cone enables the bass to be distributed everywhere evenly and it really does give this eerie sort of um, feeling of not knowing where the bass is coming from and that works really well exceptionally well in the low registers very low deep registers so also i forgot to mention these also have grills so you just put them on like that and they don't have any binding posts they are held on by magnets and i didn't hear any vibration or problem with those when i had these under duress under high volume no no issues whatsoever so that's a really good thing for a new company to get that right straight out I like them with the grills off personally. So what about these, the sound of these? As soon as I put them on, this was the impression. These are giants and they are in every respect. The sound stage is tall and wide and the sound signature is laid back, easygoing, effortless. What I mean by that is if you've got a lot going on in the sound, for example, synth bass, guitar, singers, backdrop of violins, so much going on and everything can sound like it's slightly interfering with each other on a poor speaker. These really excel in that they keep every instrument totally separate. They're just sailing by each other like ships in the night. Absolutely no contact whatsoever and it makes that whole overall impression as being um, a breeze these speakers are just not straining at all the treble on these has a lot of decay uh, what i mean by that is when you say strike a cymbal it may carry on for three or four seconds and then eventually die out to nothing 
these seem to extend that time of the decay out to a longer period of time because you're hearing that fine, fine detail carrying on for, it, 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 it gives the impression that you're getting more reverb or you're hearing something, say, like in a, in a church with a lot of reverb, you, you pick up more reverb and it gives that sense of space. So the voices on this are also very well defined and they integrate with the, with the bass very well. A slight drawback on these is the, the voices sound a little bit larger than life. So instead of somebody just standing there in front of you and sounding like about the right height and distance, these make them sound a little bit like you've got a giant in the room. That's not too much. I mean, it's not excessive. It's just slight, I would say. The bass plummets super, 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 super low. I can't emphasise that enough. I was listening to London Grammar, Truth is a Beautiful Thing album, and some of the bass notes in there I hadn't heard before. These right make them really apparent. And occasionally I was sort of almost darting to the curtains wondering, is there a storm outside? Because it's got that real deep, low, mellow bass that you just can't really tell where the hell it's coming from. So these are shockingly good performers and you're going to upset your neighbours basically. So you have been warned and you may need to go and give your neighbours a knock as well. These speakers really are designed for fun and entertainment. They don't apologise for that. And I don't think they should either. Sometimes I believe as audiophiles, we can get, I say we, I don't class myself as an audiophile, but we can get a little bit anal, shall we say. <laughs> and we tend to look at all the different aspects of sound and get a tick, tick box mentality. These kind of do away with that. Yes, the bass has um, a touch of coloration, shall we say, down in the lower registers. But let's think about this now. I've got a Lin Sondek LP12 here, and down in the low registers, um, there is some coloration, but this is an iconic turntable. It's ultimately extremely musical. After these had a week of breaking, basically I fell down on my knees and wanted to propose to these speakers because they let you know what the music's about, and that is emotion and getting to you. Um, it, it sort of drives your heart in a way, and you realise it's not all about analytical skills. This is about throwing away the cerebral aspect and enjoying the music with your heart. And that's what these do. Ultimately, you get to the marrow of the music. So the pluses of these speakers, I would say, well, the negatives, let's say some negatives. I'm not happy that there are only two finishes on these speakers. I don't want a dark oak or a black oak. I would really like these in white or silver, but they don't have that. So that's really quite annoying, really. Um, the presentation could be too large for some. Um, as I said, the actual present, the sound stage can be quite large. Also, they can, the bass can overpower small rooms. So I would say as a minimum, as a, as a minimum, uh, a small room, a medium-sized room is what you want. Um, preferably a large room, because they will just blast you out till tomorrow, and you you won't make friends with your neighbours. I've had these on low at night, and the bass still sounds too, has too much presence. So they're not going to work for me 
in terms of um, relationships with my neighbours and also with all that goodness and the travel these could be prone to harshness I've got these running with a um, an Arkham A32 amplifier and that's quite a laid back sound and the treble is not harsh on that so I think that's a good partnering so the positives these are huge sounding in every respect as I spoke about they work well in home theater as well as two channel setup also they have a wide holographically deep stereo imaging I forgot to mention that as this deep bass plummets and you get all of this goodness with the long decay of the treble you also get a huge amount of depth to the sound for example I could in some tracks I could hear people crying off what sounded miles in the distance or the sound of a cascade of rocks coming down from a mountainside or as I did mention the thunderstorm that mellow bass but you can also hear within that small details far off distance sounds so they're really holographic like that overall they're a slightly colored speaker slightly larger than life but they're exciting they are real fun speakers and they're entertaining so if you like those type of qualities as i do just go and get them because at the price they are a steal